All right, so here we have the graph of a differentiable function f shown here. And we're given that if h of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt, which the following is true. OK, so this is like a like a logical um, problem where you really got to like be creative in how you're going to think. It's not like step by step. So um, let's first find what um, h of 6, h prime of 6, and h level prime of 6 are, because we're looking at 6. So h of 6. So if h of 6, it, since h of x is equal to the integral of here, integral here, h of 6 will be the integral from 0 to 6 of f t dt. So what this means is that we're looking at this region here. That'll be that. Now, um, this is negative. It's going to be less than zero. It's going to be negative. Less than zero is going to be negative. This is a, looks like a pretty large negative quantity. Let's start from there. Now, h prime of 6 will be the derivative of this integral, which basically undoes, undoes integration. So it undoes integration, so this goes away. So this will just be f of 6. And f of 6, we can just find here. This is the function of f. And f of 6 is just 0. That's at the x-axis. So this is just 0. Now h double prime, second derivative of h of x at 6, will be the first derivative of f of x at 6 will be just f prime of 6. F prime of 6 will be, remember, when we're looking at the derivative, we're looking at the slope of the tangent line at some point. I don't know why I feel making it so thick. But at 6, we can draw a tangent line. It'll be something like this. And we don't know exactly what the value of that tangent line, or what the value of the slope of that tangent line is, but we do know that this is positive. It's positively slope. This is a positive number, or greater than 0. See, so then we can compare h little prime of 6 is greater than this, h prime of 6, which is greater than h of 6. And so less, less. So that will be a. That's the same thing. Let's see. Particle moves along the x-axis with its position at time t given by x of t equals t minus a times t minus b, where a and b are constants, and a is not equal to b. So which of the following values of t is the particle of rest? Okay, so if this is the position function to, to like, like figure out when the particle is at rest, that's essentially just asking for when is the velocity equal to zero? Because the velocity describes you know, motion. Velocity describes how the position, position is changing. So we have to find the velocity function and find where the velocity is equal to zero. So when is v of t equal to zero. Now v of t is the derivative of x of t, so x prime of t is equal to v of t. So let's find x prime of t. Let's first make this a little easier for us, so let's expand. Let's rewrite this as binomial. I would recommend you know, multiplying this out binomial-wise. So x of t is t squared minus, minus dt minus a t plus a b. This is just x of t is just equal to t squared minus t times a b plus a. So we can factor b from each of those plus an a b. Okay, now x prime of t will then be 2t minus the derivative of t times b plus a. Since a and b are constants, that means a and b are just some number. So the derivative of t times some number is just going to be that number. Because remember, when you take the derivative, for example, if you take the derivative of like of 10t, 
you just get 10 because it's just it's just a coefficient. B plus A is just a coefficient of T. So you'll just get B plus A here. And this will just be zero. This will just go away. This doesn't even matter. Okay, so now we got to find where is X prime of T equal to zero because that's when the that's when the particle will be at rest because that's when the velocity will be not moving when they'll be at rest. So be still. So we said zero equal to two T minus B plus A. And solve for the t values. Let's add this to both sides. We're going to have b plus a taken out that negative is equal to 2t. Dividing both sides by 2, we get b plus a over 2 is equal to t. That's as far as we can go. And so then the answer, our answer will be b. And number 17. The year above shows the graph of X. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Put the whole thing together. Well, actually, can't really. It's a big problem. Yeah, it will be fine. Um, we have that F of X is equal to the integral from 2 to X of G of T dt, which is the following to the graph of D, Y equals G of X. All right, let's, so let's see if we can get just g of x in general. And, and we can actually, because if we take the derivative of f of x, we essentially are going to take the derivative, we, well, we're not essentially, we're taking the derivative of this. The derivative of this or the derivative of the integral just basically un, can't, or undoes the integration. So all we're left is then g of x or g of t, however you want to look at it. Remember, the t is just a dummy variable, it's the same value as what an x would be is just, just to be you know mathematically um correct you know but same it's just, it's just a variable on the x-axis or an x value on the x-axis now um we have then that f prime of x is equal to g of x and so like well what do we know about f prime of x if this is a graph of f f prime of x what we know is that f prime of x is the slope of this line, remember it's the slope, the slope of this line is positive. So we know f prime of x is greater than zero. And what else do we know? We know that, that since this is a straight line, f prime of x is just a constant. Because the slope of a straight line, the slope of a linear equation is always the same. It's a constant, it has a constant rate of change. So then we know that essentially that f prime of x is a positive constant. Positive constant. Or what we can say, or it's, which is basically g of x is a positive constant, because that's what f prime of x is. So we look at these ones, these graphs, so which of these graphs are a positive constant? Um, it's, well, right now you can see this one works. So it's going to be A, but let's just go through the other ones as to why they're not. See, this is negative. It's below the x-axis, so this is not. This will be almost the answer. This is a negative constant. This is not, this, the slope of this is a positive constant. This is not, this is not a constant because it's, it's, it's um, change in value. So it's not C. This is definitely not D because it's, you know, it's definitely not a constant. No, it's not a straight line, not E. Anyways, the answer is A. This is a positive constant. Eighteen. All right, these types of problems can kind of sneak up on you because just the way they're um written. It's like what the heck do you do here? Because there's like no algebra techniques being used to evaluate this. Because when you plug in zero, you get zero here. But then what do you do? Because you get natural log of four minus natural log of four. So it's away, zero over zero. If the low the tiles rule won't work. But what you want to do is you, you want to just actually recognize that this is the derivative of the natural log function. This is the derivative of the natural log function. 
for a specific value, because we have the natural log of four plus h, we're actually taking the derivative of natural log, the natural log function of four. So we want to find the derivative of the natural log of four. Now let me actually put it back at x so you don't make it too. So let's just actually go back and like, like again, you don't have to worry about doing um the long, you know, limit, you know, algebra method. You already know what the derivative of natural log function is, which or you should know. This is going to be just one over x. And since we're looking at the natural log, the derivative of the natural log of four. So when x is four, we're just going to have put four where that x is. So it'll just be one fourth. And so then be over your answer. And number 19, the function f is defined by f of x equals x over x plus 2. What points x, y on the graphs of f have the property that the line tangent to f at x, y has slope 1 half? Now, this is interesting. So let's see what we got. So if we, um, this is the function, and we want to look at the tangent line of f, at x, y is in general, x, y is in point. We gotta find what f prime of x is. That'll help us because remember the slopes of tangent lines are the derivative at whatever points. So um, we can find the derivative of this. Using quotient rule, we, the, the denominator will be the, will be we square the bottom function. So x plus two squared. The top will be the derivative of the top function which is just one times the bottom function minus the top function multiplied by the derivative of the bottom function. And so let's simplify this a little bit. Let's clean this up. We'll get x plus two minus x. All we have is two on top over x plus two. Oh, my pencil. Anyway, he's getting too excited about this. So this is our derivative of f of x. Okay, so let's see what will work. The property so that x once has slope one half. So let's set this equal then to one half. So this is the derivative. This is this basically this expression gives you the value of the slope. So when is f prime of x equal to one half? We have one half equal to this two over x plus two squared. So here we can just we can just um kind of do some algebra. If we can't do it, if it's a bit easy, we'll see if it's easy. So um, cross multiplying x plus two squared equals four. Square root both x plus two equals two. So x is x is zero. Or you also have um, here x plus 2 equals negative 2. So x will also be um, negative 4. We have two possible x values. So let's find the corresponding y values for these x values. So what we do is then, we just have to find what the y value is when x is zero and x is negative four. And all you do is plug these values into this expression here. So f of zero will just be zero over two, or just zero. So zero, zero will be one point. And the other one, we plug in negative four into here. Negative four over negative four plus two. Negative four over negative two. And now it'll just be two. So we'll have another point in negative four, two. Let me figure that a little near. And yeah, so then our answer will be C.